Hi everybody, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Today is, well not today, but we are going to celebrate coming up. Uh, flag day. Flag day, so we have our flags. Now we had these flags in our last video too, so hopefully we're not overdoing the prop, same prop twice, but that's okay, but it's important. It's very important. Flag day is incredibly important. Flag day is June 14th, and from what I understand from my notes gathered from our wonderful assistant, Kaylin, that uh, the flag day was, it basically started back in 1777. Can you wow. believe that? That makes sense, one year after the revolution. And I don't think, man, you're you're good with dates. Oh. And I don't think our initial flag had this many stars. Do you know how many stars it initially had? I don't. If you do, post it below. Do you know? I know that it was the original 13 colonies. 13, there were 13, right? Can't so there were 13 stars. There you go, 13 stars. Are we right? If so, post below. John and Denise, you are the smartest people in the world. <laughs> If not, post, you guys are idiots, all right? <laughs> Whatever you want. We need to know. And I love Lulu's scarf. Yes. Let's talk about that real quick because that's beautiful. She is actually wearing a flag of her very own today. Oh, nice. I love it. Yeah. She's sporting it for the camera. So, happy flag day. And, boy, she went right up there and posed. She's getting good at this. She is our little actress today. Good job, Lulu. We appreciate that. So, happy flag day to all of you out there. It's a very patriotic month. Actually, the summer is very patriotic. So, we have, of course, July 4th coming up as well, too. That's a lot of fun. It truly is. So let's talk about the real estate market, and typically we just give a high overview of the market, but our topic today is actually very specific to the housing market, and I saw this article from Redfin. Redfin gave this article to me this last week, and they were talking about how the housing market, nearly one in five sellers are reducing their price. Can you believe that? One in five. I've noticed it too. Yeah. So what's happening is from what I can see around here in Southwest Florida, people are listing their home and usually within two weeks, 14 days, people are dropping their price, mm -hmm. whether it's 5000 50000 it's all over the board. Mm -hmm. But they're doing that, I think, because a lot of people are freaking out because they're not getting four or five showings a day and mm -hmm. it's not going pending within the first 24 hours. Right. So we're getting a little closer to a normal market. Do you think your sellers got spoiled? They super spoiled. They were throwing it on and thinking, I'm going to be under contract within two days mm -hmm. and I can just move out and be yeah. done. So now homes are staying on the market for about three to four weeks now, depending on price point. Have you noticed that the prices are dropping substantially? Mm. I wouldn't say substantially. I would say probably about a 5%. So at the rate of appreciation we were at, mm -hmm. would Which you say maybe this is more of a market correction? I would say it's a, yeah, it is. It's just a, a slowing down. Just a slowing down. Not dropping. Not a drop off. Not drop off. So, for instance, let's say somebody lists their home. Let's say somebody is living in a gated community around here, and their neighbor just sold their home for $500,000. What the next seller typically was doing over the last 12 months was they were then listing their home at five twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm, so now what I'm seeing happening is instead of them staying at that five twenty-five, which they initially listed it at, mm -hmm. they're dropping it down to five hundred or five ten. They're mm -hmm. dropping it down fifteen to twenty-five thousand in that ballpark, mm -hmm. um, just so that they were where the last home sold. I haven't seen too many dropping below that yet. Mm -hmm. Most of them are dropping to just pretty parallel to where the last one just closed for. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. not dropping off, just yeah. easing up. Yeah, we're not losing value. We're just having a correction in value, I believe. Yeah, seems mm -hmm. to be happening quite a bit mm -hmm. right now. Anything else you can think of that would make somebody want to drop their price uh, within a short period of time of putting their home on the market? Um, motivation, perhaps. Yeah, motivation. They're looking for something else. Maybe yeah. they have something else under contract, so they need to move quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm helping mm -hmm. a family right now moving to Idaho. Why they're moving from Florida to Idaho? I don't know. I think they lost it. That's a little um, backwards. A little backwards. Something so, I can add to the whole yeah. thing is that the appraisal gap strategy, right? So if you've yeah. got a seller that's just completely sure of their value, but then the appraisal comes in low. Just to add that the other day. I have a strategy for that. What is it? Well, it will get the seller to accept your offer because if the value comes in low, mm -hmm. you've already guaranteed to pay somewhat of the difference. Mm -hmm. And it won't affect your financing by much at all. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's really important to know and to have a grasp on the financing side because appraisals, as the market flew up so fast, there were some that didn't appraise for the right amount. Correct. So they need to figure that out. I have one right now that's under contract. The buyer's uh, appraisal came back 8000 lower, and so we're back at the negotiation table. It's a weird time because the appraisals are based on previous sales. Could yeah. go back six months. Yeah. And let's look at the last six months. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. So that comparable on the value of the appraisal arrives at is really based off of values from like six months ago. Yeah. Oftentimes. So the second article that I brought up that had to do with this, and I think it 
ties into why we're seeing one in five sellers drop their home prices. And it talked about pending home sales are down almost 4% from the last month of April compared to April 2021. Mm. So pending home sales. Pending home sales is a great indicator of how our next month is going to be because they're going to go pending one month and then 30 to 45 days later, they're going to close, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So pending is a good leading indicator of that sales number good for the know. for June and July. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, quick update, market update on what's going on with pricing. So my thought to buyers, I want to get my two cents on buyers. Okay. And maybe you can give some thoughts on this as well too. So if a buyer understands this market well in regards to what we just talked about how sellers are reducing their price no longer do you have to necessarily write an offer for the asking price or above the asking price sellers are more motivated and some right now are freaking out so if you find the right house that works well for you you may find the right buyer seller that's freaking out and you may be able to get a better price than what's listed currently on the market for that home. You may be able to mark down 8%, 10%. depends on where that list price was. Mm -hmm. So know that. Have your agent help you, guide you in that price chart to see what mm -hmm. maybe the last home sold for. And then maybe you offer at or just below that price. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Um, you know, <clears throat> with the prices coming down and things changing somewhat, I think a lot of buyers had fatigue and they stopped trying. Yeah, they oh, stopped. Good point. They just stopped making the effort. They were exhausted after the thirteenth offer mm -hmm. that didn't get accepted. Mm -hmm. But in light of what you're sharing, and you think about sellers that have sort of pivoted because the market is now correcting itself, mm -hmm. they're going to be more motivated to accept your offer. And yeah. a lot of the buyers are getting back into the game right now. That's awesome. And a lot not, of them are getting not back scared in. away from it. Getting and into a lot it. were a lot, a lot freaked out, stepped on the sidelines, and hopefully they're getting back in because mm -hmm. now is I think a great opportunity. I told an investor friend of mine the other day, now's the time if you were looking to buy a home to rent out like an Airbnb or something, a purse runner. I think now's the time to do that because you have people that aren't sure what's going to happen in the mm -hmm. next couple months, mm -hmm. and so I think some sellers are willing to give some leniency on their sales price. So, anyways, Agreed. good update on the market. Hope yeah. you appreciate that. If you have questions on that, call or text Denise and I. I'm glad to help you out. And while you're looking at moving your fingers hit the like and subscribe button on this as well make sure you hit some likes for lulu yeah she's, she's a little tired. sleepy she's working hard today aren't mm -hmm. you lulu anyways uh hit some likes right if you have any questions for us you can post them below make some comments and then also uh subscribe to this video we greatly appreciate that as well in our last video by the way we talked about hurricane preparedness because we're in hurricane season do you know that officially it's here Watch out. The storms are coming. Oh, I don't know if they're actually coming. They may. Well, there may be one upon us. Who knows? But we're in hurricane season. I think hurricane season goes till November. I believe so. June through November, so. something like that. I don't know. It's hey, the summer. John, would you what? agree, though, that it's not as dramatic hurricane season as the Weather Channel would have you believe? It's not. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't well, freak out. Jim Cantori, right? If he's in your town. Then maybe worry about stuff. We've seen them he was here. act. They're good actors. Yeah. He was on Fifth <laughs> Avenue during the last one, just hamming it up. It was great. Anyways, uh, don't freak out about hurricanes. No. But if you want to know more information about hurricanes and how to be prepared for those, watch our video from last week. We spent about seven or eight minutes talking about hurricane preparedness, yeah. what to have, what not to have, what to worry about, what not to worry about, all those fun things from insurance to keeping your home safe. And being prepared and informed is your yes. most important tool. Big tool. Yeah. Let's connect them with somebody today. Um, How about... Two people. Two people. Two people. So if we do have a catastrophic storm yes. or any damage at all, okay. who are you going to call first? Ghostbusters. Uh, besides them, you're probably going to call your insurance agent, right? Yes. Your insurance agent. And then if your insurance company doesn't want to participate right. as much as you're feeling they should, no. then who are they going to call, John? Ghostbusters. Again, you're wrong. <laughs> You got me thrown off because my, my cheat board says Grumpy Goat. I don't know how you're leaning into this one here. Where are you going with this? So who are they going to call? They're going to call a public adjuster. Call a public adjuster. Yeah. He was uh, John Fuentes John with um, public all, adjusters. All stone. All wow. stretch. Yep. Call John, whoever his company John is. Fuentes. Actually, if you post um, below, uh, we'll make sure you have his contact information. Boom. Um, very helpful if things should go awry with yeah. your insurance agent. Great idea. 
But the other flip side to that coin is... You got to have coffee. Got to have coffee. <laughs> you got to have coffee. So, <laughs> so, so let's talk about Grumpy Goat. Okay. So Grumpy Goat is Randy, Randy Mitchelson. Mitchelson. He's a great guy. And we want to sponsor him today with a little shout out because yeah. he gets and gives us and helps us and does all these different events with his Grumpy Goat coffee. He's here in Manita Springs. Mm-hmm. They roast their own coffee. If you're local... Actually, they even ship, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. They roast their own coffee. They get these beans in, the green beans. They make them dark, however they do that. And they, they make the coffee out of the coffee beans somehow. I don't know how they do it. It doesn't matter to me how they do it, but they do it, and it's delicious. It's delicious. It's fantastic. And so if you want some coffee, we're going to give you a link to their website, and we'll also put Randy's uh, information below. He's part mm-hmm. owner in Grumpy Goat Coffee here in wonderful Bonita Springs. They also do iced coffee. Ooh, they bottle it I up. I do love that. They it do. It is good. So good. It's I actually think cold brew. Cold brew. Coffee. Cold brew coffee. Mm-hmm. Lulu needs some today. Yes, yeah, she does. All right. So hit uh, like and subscribe. Hashtag Lulu Lending if you want as well. And post that below. And I think that's all we got for everybody today. Maybe a little bit shorter video. I think that's okay. Great talking with you guys. Have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.